I'm Kendall, I'm 21 and I'm a student nurse. I'm Susie, I'm 20 and I'm a neuroscience student. I'm Richard, I'm 26 and I'm a media consultant. I'm Noosh, I'm 20 and I'm a psychology student. I'm James, I'm 29, I'm a graduate student. I'm Alice, I'm 21 and I'm a restaurant supervisor. I keep hearing and I keep reading that millennials and people like you guys just going into your 20s are facing more mental health problems than any generation before. What do you guys think? I think it's just always been there. It's just now being talked about. Mental health problems obviously existed throughout time, throughout history, but um, the pressures have been different throughout time in history. I think the one big difference is the technological change. Mm. Now you can, at the flip of a screen, see what everyone else is doing and you instantly compare and, you know, the, the first thing to say is you shouldn't. If your life's not like that, oh, what am I doing wrong? Yeah. Oh, I need to how, pretend like I'm having the same Yeah, sort of how can I be like that? Is there a pressure to do well at everything, at once? You know, when I go to uni, we had over half of my cohort drop out, mainly mm. because of mental health conditions, because it was, it was so stressful. As I was finishing school, I was going around all the university open days and thinking, this is not where I want to be, this mm. is not the lifestyle that I want but I feel like I have to because that's what I've been told I have to do throughout my school life. Everything is targets. The increase in young people saying they have mental health problems, mental illnesses, children taking their lives because they can't cope at school. So is that where the pressure starts? Oh, completely. So, yeah. it, it starts when you're at school. It starts with the young people and then it carries on throughout our life. As individuals, I think we're expected to do so many different things all at the same mm. time. Social media, again, sort of promotes this. They're expected to sort of max out on everything. Yeah. It's like, you can't just do, go for a jog. You have to go and sign up for a half marathon and raise money for a charity. <laughs> yeah. You can't just do the microwave meal. You have to make this amazing thing and photograph it. Otherwise, it didn't happen, right? And yeah, the <laughs> so, problem is when you make the amazing meal, it has to, for it to actually happen, it has to be on social media. You have to think yeah. that pressure. I need to make it good for social media so people like it, so I feel validated. Yeah. Yeah. Or where you've got things like Tinder, where you just swipe left and right with people you like and don't like. It, it's so easy now to see that there's always something better right around the corner. Yes. Yeah. Do you guys worry about money and where you're mm. going to live? Yeah. Yes. All the time. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I genuinely haven't taken my antidepressants in probably two years, um, even though I still technically am meant to be taking them, because I cannot afford my prescription. When I've got a phone bill and water bill and <laughs> rent and everything else yeah. on top of that, that's 18 quid that I just think oh, I'd be selfish if I, if I let myself look after myself and actually spend that on getting antidepressants. Yeah. Do you guys feel like there's enough help out there? I had therapy for quite a while and right now I'm on another waiting list for like longer term therapy. That kind of waiting list takes ages. Once you're, once you're like in a non-crisis situation and you're a little bit older, mm expect to stay on that waiting list for about two years or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. I work mainly in children's hospitals, but we find so many children with mental health, um, mm. you know, mental health issues, um, difficulties stuck in hospital. You know, if you break your arm, you go to hospital. You know, mm. if you break your leg, you go to hospital. If you hurt inside, there's nowhere to go. In African and Eastern cultures, it's still a thing of like, no one, no one understands it, so no one wants to talk about it. The most will be with, some parents would be like, okay, we can pray about it. Which is lovely, like, religion can help some people, more for that, but there's a point where you need, for, like, professional care. You can't really just pray about something and then it's going to go away. Mental health is something we're talking about more and more in, in the media, but do you think we're talking about it in the right way? No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> One thing that really gets me is the imagery around mental health. And, it's, you know, it can be the, the pictures of people holding their heads yeah. or the, you know, with eating disorders, the people like, looking very miserably at the pee on their plate. I've had a lot of people ask me for pictures of when I was really ill, mm -hmm. mm. but that still happens of, of you know, can you, you know, we've got a lovely picture of you now, but can you send us a picture of you looking like a skeleton so that the people know that you were not well? Mm. And there's that point of between when is this just entertaining for your viewers or, yeah. you know, or your readers, and when is it actually going to help the cause?